joined today by Robert Chance, a California real estate broker with an impressive background in sales and marketing, technology, and media. Robert's career in real estate began in 2002 with a focus on residential needs. He found his niche selling vertical living spaces in downtown San Diego, working for a reputable local developer. He's extremely proficient in technology and internet lead generation and has been a profiled speaker for number one expert on internet lead generation, as well as I Succeed, where he discussed the DISC behavior types in working with clients. Robert has authored two publications, one entitled Questions Every Savvy Real Estate Investor Needs to Ask Before They Purchase a Pre-Construction Condo or Resale Condo, and Top Agent Secrets Revealed tips for new agents to use to succeed in real estate sales. Now, let's welcome Robert to the call as we join our host, Tim Harris. So, Robert, thank you for being my co-host today. I certainly appreciate your time. You and I have got a lot of ground that we want to cover. Um, So, listeners, listen in because Robert and I agreed ahead of time to really drill down on some very practical information that will put you guys into action and help you make money. That is the focus, and we're also going to do our best to motivate you. So, Robert, again, I really appreciate your time and being my co-host today. Hey, Tim, I appreciate being here. This is great. So, um, You and I were just talking briefly right before the start of the show. Actually, the listeners may have heard us uh, gabbing that I asked if there's anything that you wanted to talk about that wasn't on the list of questions that we had sent back and forth, and you said habits. So forgive me if I totally blow up the order of the questions, but I think habits might be a great question, a great topic for us to start with, because really at the end of the day, long-term, ever-increasing success does come from habits. What are your thoughts on that? What habits does every agent need to have? Well, a lot of it is creating the habit of that daily activity of lead generation. And it's important to know when an an agent, we don't create our future or success, we create habits. And everything that we get in life is because we create the habit that produces the results that we're looking for. Unfortunately, what happens is people want to fall back into their comfort zone. And when they get out there doing their lead generation and they decide to take an activity, if they're they're in that comfort zone, if they're not in their comfort zone, they're feeling uncomfortable with doing what they're doing, they want to go back to that area where I feel safe and secure. And so, again, the habits create what we actually want in our life. And if we just focus on each and every day, getting that time block schedule of sitting down for two to three hours and making that lead generation a habit, then everything else falls into place. So what I'm hearing you say is we all have habits. Some of the habits are designed to move us forward. Some of the habits that we might have without even necessarily knowing it are actually impeding our success. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Exactly. Yep. So share with, share with me, Robert, what do you think like the habits that a agent who's struggling might have? So an agent who's struggling would have these, we can call them behaviors, but I like your word habits. Give me a, some for examples. Well, they all come in as independent contractors, right? And as an independent contractor, they're saying, well, I don't have a boss. I don't need to follow a schedule. You know, I gave that up when I left my J-O-B. So now I can create my own schedule. You know, the top three things why people get into real estate is because they want to make a lot of money, they love people, and they want to create their own schedule, right? (laughs) And then those three things go out the window the first six months when, they haven't really sat down and said, okay, what do I need to do to succeed at a high level in this business? Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm creating what I want to do each and every day by myself. And that's where coaching actually comes into play. Coaching is very vital because you need to have someone on the sidelines that can see things that you can't see you're doing. Well, so help me understand, and this question's a little bit self-evident, but I think it's important for this, so the listeners can get the most out of this. Why is it that, and because I agree with you 100%, everything you said makes sense. So what, why is it that agents struggle? Well, the, like the independent contractor thing, right? I think that's part of it. But something about agents in particular that wouldn't necessarily have had some uh, the uh, aversion they have, seem to have to scheduling and, and all that. But as soon as they get the real estate license, there's something about the real estate agent culture that makes it all of a sudden so that having that independence, having that lack of uh, scheduling, having that 
uh, you know, perceived sense of freedom almost takes precedent over having income, <laughs> having consistent money, having consistent success. What is it that happens inside the great halls of real estate that cause agents to uh, make that mistake of giving up on the idea of the fact, you know, they know that having habits, they know having a schedule gets some consistent results. They've experienced that in the past in their own lives, school and having jobs. So what is it about real estate that makes it so that people all of a sudden forget that? So a lot of it comes down to two things. We know that in this business, 90% of success is your mindset and 10% is skill. And I see a lot of fear with people surrounding the fear, uh, the skill set first. So they're always like, well, I need to get ready to get ready. I need to have my website done. I need to have my business cards. I need to have this done before I can go speak with somebody. I need to practice my scripts. That skill is going to come from the habit of going out and doing it over and over and over. So they have to get rid of the notion that it's going to look pretty. When I am coaching even like a brand, brand, brand new agent, the first thing I ask them, I want them to do, I want you to be able to go out and fail and fail really, really big. You know, make a complete mess of everything because that's when you're going to learn. We don't why? succeed forward. Well, stop there. Forward. Stop there for a second. But why? That's so true, dude. Why is that that they folks seem to learn quicker from failures than they do successes? Why is that true? Because it allows us to stop and reevaluate. What did I do wrong? What can yeah, I look not, at? Not, but, Robert, not everyone, right? I mean, most agents, when they experience failure, they'll just write it off. The market was this, or the seller was that, or the other agent took it at a higher price, right? It's a special agent that allows themselves to be introspective from the failure, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and they need to step back and say, okay, so I messed up. What can I look at differently that I did, didn't do this time that I could do differently next time? I, I see the best agents are the ones that fail every day. And if, if I had to kick the person in the butt that screwed up my life more, I wouldn't be able to sit down for a month because <laughs> I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. But I've learned, However, I've learned from them. I, I never learned from my successes because if you just have success, then you're moving into that you know, area that like everything's easy. It just comes easy. So I don't need to really work that hard. Where does that, how does an agent, it does, and how does that agent develop that willingness in a world that basically only seems to celebrate success, right? How, and, and we also live in a blame culture, especially in our industry. It's always, you know, some extraneous reason why I wasn't successful. Where, how does an agent go about developing that, I mean, even that willingness to be introspective and learn from their mistakes? Where does that start? Good question. Um, well, they have to look from within. Um, basically, I, I drill down to where they, what their childhood was like. What were they programmed as a child? What type of support system did they have when they were little growing up? Uh, from parents, brothers, siblings, mothers, whatever. Because it all comes down to what we believe about ourselves um, from a very early, early age. And then really realizing that, you know, this is my life. It doesn't have to be my life. Um, I can create anything that I want, and being able to just to relinquish control and move forward. So it starts with basically, and this is an interesting uh, paradigm shift, but if you guys were to start, uh, every time you have any kind of failure, any variety of failure, even if a million people will agree that it was totally not your fault, and I can pick examples. Well, I will pick an example just to make it a point. Let's just say you're in a minor fender bender. You're in a minor accident. You know, nothing, no, no one's really hurt. Car needs some body work. That's the extent of it, right? Mm-hmm. Totally not your fault. Somebody backed into you. Please say it wasn't your fault. The other person that hit you, you know, totally took responsibility. So on the surface, you are the victim of this accident, right? Well, yeah. if you take that stance, you're making a huge mistake. The mindset shift comes when you say, you know what? I was responsible for that. How? How were you responsible for that? Well, you put yourself in that parking lot at that particular time. You parked your car in that particular spot. So if you start by saying everything is your responsibility, even if overtly it wasn't, that's forces your mind to start opening up to ways that it can improve. Does that resonate with you, Robert? Uh, yeah, and I even go even a little deep, a little deeper because I have the I bring in the spiritual and the um, 
the uh, law of attraction element into it as well. Everything's happening mm-hmm. for a reason, and we're a collection and a sum of all of our thoughts. So our thoughts are attracting some of that stuff in our life for us to learn lessons. Well, um, explain more about that. That's obviously something you have passion for. You wouldn't have said it the way you did. So explain what you mean by that. So not uh, everyone's exposed to the law of attraction, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all energy, right? I'm energy. Your energy. This phone call is energy. That gets people's desks, their cars, energy. And energy can never be, can never die. It just transforms or get, it gets better. So when we have a thought, that thought will go out to the world. That will attract a similar thought. It's like successful people hang around successful people, right? Because they all have the same energy. And then you see impoverished people hanging around in the same area for impoverished people because they have that same belief system. So our thoughts create our reality. So we have to look at what our thoughts that we're programming into our mind to figure out what it is that we need to do to, so then when we take the actions, we get the right um, output that we're looking for. Kind of like programming a computer. If you have a hard drive in a computer, that's your, thought, that's your central core processor. But if you don't have software in it, what's the computer going to do? It's just going to exactly. sit there and not run. So you have to put in software. So what is well, the software that you're putting into your, your, your mind? So let's, let's stop there because that's a really valid point, really good point. And it is so true. that And this goes back to the whole failure thing, or this goes back to basically taking responsibility. This goes back to the greater topic today of uh, habits, right? So the essence of it is, guys, uh, when you are experiencing a – uh, failure. Let's just call it what it was. You didn't take a listing. You had something happen in your life. What do you find yourself naturally doing? Are you going and trying to hang out with other people that will celebrate the failure with you in their way of saying, well, that's normal. Everybody goes through that. In other words, they're empowering the failure. Do you watch news? Do you read things on the internet? Do you start finding yourself digging the hole deeper when you're already uh, taking, uh, basically experiencing that step back? What you're doing essentially is you're locking in the failure and even maybe making it so you'll have future failures. So going back to the responsibility thing, look at it for what it was. Look at it for your opportunity to learn from that particular experience. And then think about the fact that you don't want to attract more of that to you and then take responsibility for the fact that in some way you attracted whatever that bad experience was to you. That's the hard part of all this, guys. When you're wanting to grow interpersonally, Robert says spiritually, and I agree with him, when you're wanting to grow on this plane, you really do have to start with the concept that everything that is in your life, good, bad, or indifferent, you've brought into your life. You've manifested from past thoughts and, most importantly, past um, behaviors. Thoughts by themselves have power, but the behaviors that come as a result, the actions that come as a result of the thoughts, that's what ultimately determines your destiny. So let, let's take a break from this, and let's let's venture off into the more practical. Make sense, Robert? Yes. Okay. Well, one, one other thing I want to, want to talk about is setting your goals. When you set your goals, if you don't believe you're worth it, then you can set all the goals in the world, and they probably won't come into reality because you have some inner resistance and inner stories that you're telling yourself that you don't deserve to have something. I just so read a great inner- book on yeah, you're you're just talking about something Julie and I are going to talk about on a future radio show. It's a great topic. It's basically the fact that we all set uh, internal upper limits for ourselves, whether we know it or not. Is that what you're talking about right now? Yeah, kind of like your inner resistance. If that's greater than the energy of desire, you're never going to achieve your goal. Okay, that's really a great topic. You know, I was going to talk to you about something else, but let's let's drill down on that. If you're, so I'm going to say again what you just, uh, I think I heard you say. You're saying that basically if you're, essentially if the energies that are uh, surrounding the accomplishment of the goal are weaker than, say, for example, your disbelief in your ability to accomplish it or your worthiness of having a particular goal, you'll never do it. So if your beliefs that you won't or the beliefs that you're not worthy of the goal are stronger than your beliefs that you will and that you are worthy of it, you're saying you won't accomplish the goal. Did I hear you right? Yes. And so you have so to how does someone, something. Well, help you them gotta, understand. So how does someone identify that? So what you got to do is, let's say you want to get to a certain dollar amount, and this is what, what I did. I wanted to get to a certain dollar amount each year in income. And so I picked an item that matched that income goal. 
and I mm. went out, and it was a 36-foot Class A motorhome. <laughs> and this is what I wanted. So I went and looked at it. I test drove it. I got brochures on it. And that equated to the amount of money that I wanted to make. And I brought that picture of that back. And you know what they say, what the mind can believe it can achieve. You, you have play to in tell hell? yourself, yeah, I am worthy of this. I am, I am worth having this in my life. That's planting the seed to believe that you can make that income level at that point that you choose. That's right. Whatever the mind of man can uh, conceive and believe, he will achieve. And that's so that you know, it's interesting. You bring up the idea of using something like material as you know, the motorhome or the car or the house or the ring or the watch or the maybe even the vacation. And you know, the interesting thing, guys, is using those external things is often the conflict for a lot of you that haven't really thought about this. I'm going to offer this out to you. Um, since Robert brought this up, I'll kind of go back to a, a previous topic, but we're all spiritual beings in a physical manifestation. So what does that mean? We all come from the same stuff, spiritual beings, and we're in a physical plane. And as such, we need you know, shoes on our feet. We need a car to drive. We need a coffee cup to hold our coffee. We need a, rich, a, a watch to tell the time. If you're not using your phone, you need a house to live in. You need stuff, right? So get over your... Uh, apprehension or your and I use this word carefully but your guilt associated with stuff get over your thinking that okay well you know a camera is good enough no it's not none of you can just put in a little bit more effort help a few more people and buy a Bentley if that's really what sets your heart free and that will motivate you that's what you should be setting your heart free and focusing on because we're spiritual beings in the physical uh, you know manifestation and you need stuff so it might as well be really nice stuff <laughs> It might as well be the nicest stuff that you give yourself permission to enjoy. I mean, guys, don't get all entangled with the idea that, you know, a Timex is good enough when you want a Rolex. Get a Rolex. It is better. That's the reason it costs more. So how would they identify within themselves if they were the ones holding themselves back? How do they identify, like, where they're holding themselves back? Look at their life. Mm. Look what they're Talk about that. Look at the five people they hang around the most. You know, you're some of the five closest five people. Estimate all the incomes of those five people and divide it by five. Add them up and divide it by five, and that's probably where your income is. Figure out where your financial thermostat is, what you're limiting you're at. And then if you want to get to the next level, start hanging out with people that are bigger leaders in the office. Surround yourself with people that are where you want to be, and then what happens is your energy then becomes matched with our energy. But you first have to take a look, where am I in my life, and where do I want to be, and how am I going to get there? And that that level will rise once you take the steps of going out. And even if you don't know somebody, find somebody that is very successful in, you know, in some type of field, and they're a you know, very successful person, you, you've looked at them, you've seen them in the local community, say, I'd love to come out and interview you and find out what it is that you've done, how you've done it, and what your life looks like now. It, people at that level love to give back, and they would love to share how they got to that level. And that's how you rise up, by being around and surrounding yourself with people at that level. Well, they know. Yeah, it does. Robert's very elegantly said. So they know that one of the reasons that they've become successful is because they've adopted the mindset of abundance. And abundance means that they are uh, wanting to give back and contribute to the people uh, that are wanting to follow in their footsteps. Because wealthy, successful people, again, guys, recognize the fact that life isn't about scarcity, it's about abundance. We did a past radio show on this, so go back and listen to it. Um, yeah, and you know, even if you can't necessarily directly connect with the types of people that Robert's describing, you can read books. There's so many different ways you can tap into that same uh, energy. If you're finding yourself in a very wealthy area and you're, you know, in a community, say, for example, you're in Southern California, Laguna Beach, Newport Beach, and you're not finding these people in your life, it's because you're not putting out the type of energy. In other words, you're not the type of person that they want to associate with. So you won't attract these people to you if you're not somebody that's going to contribute to them. I promise you, they will prevent you or they will protect themselves from um, allowing a leech into their lives until you become a lily because successful people try to attract lilies. Now, if you're in the, on the path of learning and wanting to improve, that energy they'll adore and they will do everything in their power to help you. That is the essence 
uh, the heart of a teacher. That's the essence of a coach, too, guys, by the way. You know, one of the things I look for in coaches, I look for people that want to improve. I look for people that are, you know, avoiding complacency like the plague. I'm looking for people that are uh, consciously aware of the fact that they control their destiny in their hands with uh, primarily with their thoughts. I mean, Robert said 90% mindset, and I, I agree with him. So, Robert, let's, let's, again, let's make it practical. So for the sake of the agent who, say, you're moderately producing agent, and they want to, you know, say they're doing consistently, say, I don't know, 20 houses or 15 houses per year sales, they're making a good income, especially if they're in your market in San Diego, you know. But let's say they want to go to the next level. You mentioned mindset. What are the things that, generally speaking, they need to work on with regards to their mindset? Uh, their comfort zone. Hmm. If they're doing 20 and they're stuck at that, they're in their comfort zone. And in order to get higher to the next level, they have to get completely uncomfortable. They might have to start doing things that are outside of what they're currently doing. So if they're just doing 20 off of, let's say, their database and sphere and open houses, then the next step would be, okay, maybe I should be looking at at for sale by owners and expireds. And that will help them get more units, but they'll be completely uncomfortable as they're doing it. And why people are afraid of for sale by owners, I don't know. I, I keep wondering that because I did really well when I was first got in the business with FISBOs. All you got to do is get in front of them. Pretty much, yeah. And most agents or uh, most, we call them unrepresented owners, as you know, Robert. Most unrepresented yeah. owners, a.k.a. FISBOs, they're FISBOing uh, because they just frankly didn't know somebody. So the mental you know, the, we're talking about mindset. The mindset is that for sale by owner sign in their front yard, what that truly is a, is a help wanted sign. And when yeah. you go and talk with them and you just use our scripts, it really is, well, you know, some of our most successful agents, as you know, Robert, they're the ones that, you know, love FISBOs. They love the unrepresented owners because so many other agents are afraid of them. Julie and I have a theory that there's a private society of agents that make millions of dollars per year off FISBOs that they all have an agreement in their charter, right, that they're supposed to tell every other agent that FISBOs eat their young, thus scaring other agents off from pursuing them. That's our theory. We're, we haven't yet discovered the secret society, but we're pretty sure it exists. Skull and crossbones well, type thing. Well, just a little bit of advice. If they are interested in FISBOs, the sweet spot for, for me came about the third or fourth week, where they mm. just said, Robert, will you come out and list my property? Sure. Yeah. Right over. Right. I mean, that's all it is, really, especially this time of year, guys, because yeah, that would be a nice conversation to have on another radio show. So as we round the bend, as we round the bend, Robert's one of our coaches, guys. You guys probably picked that up. So we round the bend, Robert. When you take on a new coaching client and they're coming to us, you know, having listened to the radio show, they're coming to us having um, a lot of these guys or, you know, a great majority of the agents that we coach who are already successful in their own rights, but they're coming to us because they want to build a team or they're coming to us because they want more balance and they're coming to us because they want, obviously, more income in a lot of cases – it's more consistent income. So how do you identify and prioritize with that new coaching client? Let's say we assign one to you today. How do you prioritize where to put the focus? Well, the, for them or for how I'm going to take them through it? Well, for them, right? How do you, how we, how do you determine what – because a lot of agents, again, look, I want to earn more money. I want to build a team. I want to – be able to take, you know, every third day of the week off, I want to, you know, whatever, whatever, right? So how do you help them focus in on what's most important? Well, the first thing is i got to figure out why they're doing it. You know, it all drills down to exactly why they're in the business and why they want to achieve that. That's the first step. And then I go and go through a little platform about what success looks like so they understand in order for me to get them from where they are to where they want to be, they know what they have to do each and every day. And I need to get them to buy in on that because if they're not bought in on that, they will probably won't do the activities necessary. That's and right. then the activities come next, and then the activities, then we just create the habit of that activity each and every day. And then making sure that those activities are followed up with. And one of the most important things is to have accountability in place. And I recommend, even in my life, I have, right now I have about five or six accountability partners that I'm checking in with every week just because I want to make sure that I'm on track to doing what I'm doing um, in my business. And that helps. That accountability helps because you need something to bounce people off of. 
Well, that's the whole point, really. That's one of the main things that people say they're looking for in a coach is external accountability. You know, it's interesting when you they say they want that and you give it to them, and then you'll discover that about half of them didn't want it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're thinking they wanted the accountability. Know. Yeah, well, exactly. But, you know, it goes back to the whole thing about the culture of real estate. People get into this business, they know that having a disciplined life gets consistent results. They know that from having previous jobs. They know that from having gone to school. I mean, your kids, guys, listeners, your children during the typical school day get more done in one day than most of us do all month. I mean, think about it. They're in this activity for an hour. The bell rings to go to the next activity. The bell rings to go to the next activity to go to the bell rings. So they're having an English class, a gym class, a, you know, all the rest of it. And whereas most agents will just wallow away on their website or writing a blog post or doing Facebook updates or doing, you know, a mediocre job at lead follow-up. In other words, because you don't have that uh, accepted habit of having – a schedule of having minimum standards for yourself every day, you get very wishy-washy and consistent results. Uh, and the other thing we really will focus in on is a lot of you guys have really fallen into the habit of not having cash flow but having cash spurts. And nothing's going to ruin the spirit. Nothing's going to ruin your sense of really independence, freedom, and confidence more than worrying about money. So if you find yourself having really, really great months and then really, really crappy months, it's big, that is a curable problem and it's all from inconsistent habits it's all from inconsistent lead generation inconsistent virtually everything in your business so focusing in on that and helping you guys wrap your minds around that uh, fact that consistent cash flow cash flow not cash spurts is a choice and you can have that in your life that is such a revelation for so many of you, you it, it really is liberating because it gives you the opportunity to then financially plan it gives you the opportunity to fund your kids 529s it gives you the opportunity to think about the vacation or you know whatever it else it is by your 33 foot uh rv whatever it is that you want to do you now will know that these particular activities that you do consistently around a schedule will lead to these particular results and then you have created for yourself a real honest to god real estate business and not just a real estate practice so listen listeners anything we can do for you at any time i want you to remember we are here free coaching calls for agents.com couple of reminders when you request a free coaching call at free coaching calls for agents.com, Robert touched on the great quote, uh, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe he will achieve. That's from the book by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. We're going to give you, when you request a free coaching call at free coaching calls for agents.com, we're going to give you a free copy of that book along with our other book, Real Estate Treasure Map. Um, you know, guys. That's exactly what a lot of you are looking for. You're looking for a lot of the mindset and motivation. You're looking for a business plan. That's what those two things will do. Along with that, you'll get a free coaching call at freecoachingcallsforagents.com. So, Robert, as we round the bend on today's radio show, anything else you'd like to say to the up to 100,000 people that listen to our regular our radio show on a regular basis? Yes. The reason why people don't want to do coaching is because they are they want to stay in their comfort zone. So you've got to get out of that comfort zone. It's an inside-out job. You've got to work internally to have the stuff that you want in your life. Yeah, I think I don't. I won't even try to top that. Very well said. So, Robert, thank you very much for my co uh, being my co-host today. Listeners, please remember. I'm sorry. It's been fun. I love this. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, you're very good. You made me work too hard. This was a little bit too intense. I like a little fluffier. <laughs> You made me think the whole time. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to drink any of my coffee, damn it. <laughs> so, Robert, thank you very much for being my co-host on the radio show today. Um, you guys remember our title sponsors for the radio show, MojoSells.com, MojoSells.com. We have another title sponsor coming on tomorrow. And, of course, 800HomeHotline.com. You guys definitely want to check out MojoSells.com. Robert and I talked a lot about accountability. We talked a lot about having a business system. We talked a lot about, um, you know, really basically finally taking responsibility. MojoSales.com helps you do all that. It's one of the basic building blocks that everyone should have in their real estate practice. Definitely check out those guys. And, of course, 1-800-HOMEHOTLINE.COM. Robert, thank you, and have a fantastic day. Listeners, we'll talk with you on the radio tomorrow.